Hello, I am Banashri Thapa, one of the 32 change makers selected to be a part of this wonderful journey called, uh, called the FAIR project. Um, these last eight months have been a period of intense introspection and, and it has allowed us to reach deep into our conscience and reflect on our presumptions, biases and help us develop empathy towards people positions and ideologies that we don't see eye to eye with. I think I can safely sp say for the rest of my 31 comrades when I say that um, this process of unlearning and learning was not an easy one, um, but I've definitely come out the other side a more compassionate and informed change maker. As a part of my final exercise when FAIR asked me to share one key area which I was most passionate about, I thought of the one that often keeps me up at night, um, climate change, and more importantly, the future of climate change, which is renewable energy. Renewable energy came to the scientific community and to the global world as the knight in shining armor uh, to save the world from the mess that fossil fuel and reckless industrial revolution had left in its wake. And rightly so, renewable energy was free it was um, in excess and unlike its predecessors, it would in good confidence never run out. So naturally, when nations got together for the Kyoto Protocol and quite recently for the Paris Agreement, one of the underlying factors that have di uh, directed the 2050 net zero agenda of the planet was a non-negotiable shift from a fossil dependent um, planet to a renewable energy dependent planet. Um, already, solar panels, wind turbines, hydroelectric dams are some of the most popular renewable energy choices globally and billions of taxpayers' money are being churned to convert and uh, for large-scale implementation of these energy technologies. From the 2018 report by the International Energy Agency, Renewable power is set to expand by 50% between 2019 and 24, uh, led by solar panels uh, and solar energy. Solar energy is, uh, is set to account for almost 60% of that expected growth, uh, <clears throat> with onshore wind representing one quarter. So, in other words, cleaner days for the developed countries and subsequently for the rest of the world will soon be a reality. But like every other white knight in the history of Disney Universe, our white knight uh, is not without red flags. Renewable energy um, has been uh, often requires more land than fossil fuel production and uh, is, uh, has, is linked with infrastructure fragmentation or even eliminating high quality wildlife habitats by generating noise pollution, collision and other negative impacts. A recent study published by Global Change Bio Biology um, found more than 2,200 renewable energy facilities and a further 900 planned in protected areas, key biodiversity areas and wilderness areas. And if you talk about biodiversity and the impact of renewable energy in the um, conservation sector, we need to talk about how wind turbines, both land-based and offshore, kill millions of migratory birds and bats every year from collision. Hydroelectric dams block migration routes for fishes uh, and preventing them from breeding and causing high juvenile mortality rates. Concentrating solar plants, known as power towers, produce beams of sunlight intense enough to incinerate insects and birds on large scales. When we talk about the raw materials needed for renewable energy technology, um, these are often found in remote and biodiverse places and mass mining and clearing of land is required to access them. Not just the accidental hazards related to this sector, the raw materials required in, in particular, the um, uh, raw earth metal, the rare earth metals that are key for solar panel manufacturing and batteries of EVs that Tesla is keen on pushing forward uh, require a complex mix of metals such as copper, silica, cobalt, nickel, lithium and silver, many of which are, have only been previously used in very little quantities. So under a 100% renewable energy world, uh, metal requirements would rise drastically requiring heavy mining of already limited resources. 
already. Uh, heavy bauxite mining for our aluminium needs have resulted in large-scale clearing and stripping of land areas to acquire subsequent su sufficient amounts. Serious impacts of bauxite mining have already been seen in uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, in India and Guinea. And half of the world's endangered chimpanzees which, which are found in Guinea have been pushed to the brink of extinction due to extensive mining. The day is not far when similar stories for lithium mining becomes a reality. When we talk about electric vehicles, lithium, known as the white gold of energy transition and the key component of lithium ion batteries that are used in electric vehicles come to mind. Much of the world's resource of lithium uh, is found in the lithium triangle, which sits between Argentina, Bolivia and Chile. One such area, Chile's uh, Atacama salt flats, which are facing degradation from extinction, are crucial breeding ground and nesting grounds for flamingos, which are endemic and are considered vulnerable and nearly threatened. And this is just one species in one region of just one mineral used in the clean energy sector. And not just in biodiversity, the future of renewable energy is predicted to have large-scale implications in peace and security and increasing conflicts in the world. For instance, most of the world's largest reserves of nickel and cobalt, which are key in clean energy technology, reside in the Democratic Republic of Congo. If you look at the projections in the screen, it is evident that some of the raw materials in clean energy are not evenly distributed across the world. So say, what happens when, say, in the future, US needs cobalt, which is present majorly in a currently conflicted and socially unrest country like Congo? If we shift away from land masses and look under our water, deep sea mining, an area that was lucrative but considered economically unviable previously, is now attracting stakeholders uh, due to enhanced mining technologies. Regions in the abysmal Pacific Ocean are now in acute risk of fragmentation of biodiversity because of numerous mining excavations that have crippled the rich but fragile ecosystems. And unlike the, their terrestrial counterparts, degradation or damage in the marine ecosystem has takes longer to rehabilitate and has large-scale ripple effects across various marine sectors. Addressing the last but probably one of the most important problems in the coming years is the water crisis. Approximately 2 million litres of water are pumped and evaporated um, to obtain one tonne of lithium product and more fresh water is needed to produce the concentrated product needed for export. So while the technology may be less damaging than a fossil fuel technology, it is still not free from defects. So the question arises, um, is renewable energy not the solution? And what can be done to make it a better and more sustainable form of uh, energy source. <coughs> from what we have in our hands right now and from the information given by the scientific research, um, renewable energy technology is still our best case scenario. But what is non-negotiable is following the same unsustainable path um, in using this technology like we did with the fossil fuels. Um, using and clean energy will require effective recycling mechanisms, source to sink monitoring, and increasing the efficiency of current clean energy technologies. It will require responsible sourcing of raw materials and substituting raw materials when demands exceed supply. It will also require sharing, ex making available equi equitable sharing of resources between producers and consumers um, to avoid conflicts in the future. From an ecological standpoint, these projects need to be built around areas with less biodiversity and less wildlife. Um, and additionally, no mining zones need to be clearly demarcated in um, international biodiversity treaties like Convention of Biological Diversity and so on and so forth. In the policy arena, strict instruments to regulate mining operations and obligation to adhere to stringent independent environmental and human rights standards is still lacking and it, there are there's a dire need to push forward to push for a more strong and efficient um, uh, instrument for regulation and monitoring 
Um, while most of the discussion has been centered around the gloomy side of renewable technology, I want to reiterate that there is no shed of doubt that renewable energy sources are our answer. They are clean and they are greenhouse friendly. They also have the capacity to carry the energy expectancy of the planet um, in the 2050 or in the future. And they have a long lifespan, which means that there is very little investment with long term benefits. So what the world needs right now is a well thought out plan to circumvent the few issues that are currently tackling, that are currently surrounding um, uh, the clean energy sector, and uh, which mainly resides in understanding and developing technologies and uh, strategies to efficiently use the rare earth metals, which are key to uh, clean, uh, clean energy technology, so that we continue to use or benefit from these resources over a long period and also leave enough for the future generations. This was my time. Thank you, everyone.